This is a tutorial on making costume lights. I did it because I received so much positive feedback on my last videos, and I've actually run into people at Halloween parties and Renaissance festivals that have tried making these legs and done it successfully. So there are virus references and virus jokes in here. That's because for the past four weeks, I've been locked down. I live in New York, and I did this to pass the time. Hopefully, if people are still locked down, this helps you to pass the time. So enjoy the video. So I'm talking to the deer. I tell him, hey, I'm stuck in the cabin. There's quarantine virus bad stuff going on. I'm going to make a new set of legs. They ask me, what kind of legs? This is Minotaur, Seder, I don't know. He says, well, what about deer legs? I said, hmm, that's a good idea. How do you think I should start? And they said, well, if you're making a video, why don't you start the video the same way you always do? I said, that is a good idea. So here you go. So if you've been wrapping your legs in foam and old carpeting, Stuffing your favorite set of furry pajamas, walking around on stilts, maybe even making your own platforms, or trying to find a substitute for reticulated legs, uh, not with the best results. Well, here's your participation trophy. Have you ever wondered why some costume legs look off balance? I apply one rule when making my legs, and that is that the knee has to be centered over the hoof. If you do this, it will appear that your body weight is being carried forward by the hoof and the front leg. If you don't line up the knee with the hoof, then you may appear to be leaning backwards. Let me show you how that rule applies. In each of these examples, the red line represents where the human leg actually is, followed by the fake knee that's built out over the hoof, and then a reverse joint built up behind the leg. All of this combined will give you the illusion of balance. Hey guys, I did like you said, I used the same intro I used for all my other videos. Is that okay? All right, great, I'm gonna get started. First part of this video covers making the legs, but I also go over the armor, the ax, and the mask. There's detailed shots of each, a little bit of how to make each one. So if you're impatient like me and you're looking for something particular, just skip ahead. I usually start with a tall pair of platform boots. Make sure they're broken in and they're comfortable. Next, I'll be making the hooves out of plastic jugs. They'll be cut and hinged so that they move when you walk. I like to attach heavy cardboard to the outside of the leg. This stiffens up the boot and it also provides an attachment point for some of the buildup. The hooves get shaped and that screw is a temporary hinge. Later on, I'll use a heavy duty bolt so that nothing comes apart while I'm walking. Next I used pool noodles to develop the muscle structure and do a build up. I was in line with a whole bunch of food and toilet paper hoarders. I got about 10 pool noodles in my arms and these women start picking on me. They're like, why are you buying pool noodles? Why are you hoarding pool noodles? So I looked at them and I says, you know what? I breathe through them. The virus dies by the time it reaches the other end. You ever seen a sick elephant? No. That's why it works. Made them think, didn't it? After a quick test walk, then I wrap everything in duct tape. It smooths it out, makes it even, allows me to see if I have to tuck foam anywhere else, and the duct tape becomes a good gluing base for the fur. Once you're done, this, this feels almost like a cast, but it still has light weight. Yeah, the legs are going good. I'm going to do the armor next. What do you mean, why armor? I want to be the most badass deer you ever saw, that's why. Next, I do the upper leg armor. That armor will move when you walk, so it adds to the illusion. But more than that, the knee now extends over the hoof, giving that sense of balance that I talked about in the first part. All right, let me show you how I make the armor. I use cardboard sauna tubes from the hardware store. Cut them into the shapes I need. Once I got the plates made, then I use Chicago screws to attach the plates together. The Chicago screw acts almost like a hinge and it allows some movement within the plates. I also use Chicago screws to attach any belts or harnesses I need to hold the armor together or to make it easier to wear. Next, I use foam tape to build up the edges of the armor. All 
And then this particular armor, normally I cover my armor in Warbla to give it a hard surface. Some I've covered in leather. This I'm going for a more woodsy look, so I'm covering it in burlap and then I'm painting the burlap. After a short test walk, now it's time to add some fur to these legs. Let's talk about weight. I'm wearing about six bags of glue sticks on my legs. So if you can't walk through Walmart while carrying six bags of glue sticks and breathing through your virus mask, it's time to drop this project and stop skipping leg day. You cannot use one hair length. I have everything from a long wig hair, several medium hairs, and I even got deer print on regular fabric just to save me a little time and effort, even though I can paint. If you use one length of hair, you're going to look like you bought this at Walmart. First, I use a long wig hair. This helps to obscure the outline of your actual leg, and it also creates movement when you walk. Then I attach the deer skin fabric, and I stretch it tight, almost like an actual skin. This all gets glued down. Then the medium fur gets added as a transition. Now you're going to have seams. Let me give you a tip on seams as well as the fur. Fur is paintable. It's almost like painting on a canvas. I use a water-based acrylic. It stains the fur. I use it to hide the seam edges and also to blend the colors between the two furs. And this is what it looks like after it's painted. Now as far as seams, there's one other tip I can give you. If you have an outside seam that you're not going to be painting because it's next to lawn fur, you can always glue the fur over in the direction that you need it to go to cover up that seam. It's important to check the legs between each step. You put them on, you're checking for rub spots, you're checking for armor that hangs up, things that don't move right, and uh, try to ignore that orange belt. Uh, that was repurposed from an old costume. They made me dress as He-Man, and I absolutely hated it because I had to wear this blonde Dutch boy wig and shave for the first time in years, so let's not talk about it. But yeah, get out there and check your legs between each step. The armor. I bought a cheap set of shoulder pads off eBay to use as a base because they're not going to show anyways and why invent something if somebody already made it for me. I take the shoulder pads, add my own leather straps and harness. From there I build up the armor using the same system I showed you in the leg section. Add some foam striping in the armor to give it a 3D effect. And then I covered this armor in burlap for a cool texture. Painted the burlap, added some shading, and that was the armor. The mask. I usually start by pushing warm warble onto my face. Don't do this. It's the stupidest thing I do. You'll get hurt and you'll burn yourself. I attached the cast to my face to an old paintball helmet. I disassembled the helmet. It's going to give me a solid base to screw the antlers to. Then what I do is I build up the face using clay foam. The white tubes you see, those are for the antlers to screw into. And then I fabricated some ears and I used more clay foam to finish the shape of the face. I made the antlers by slipping metal rods inside of foam tubes. Those rods will then get screwed into the helmet base. In this video, the white wires are a mock-up that I used for reference while I bent the foam tubes to the shape I needed. Once that's done, I added upright tubes that represent the points on the horns, and I checked them for positioning. The upright tubes then get carved to shape, and the antlers all get smoothed out using clay foam. At that point, start adding your layers of fur to the face, and then it's time to trim it and paint it until it looks finished. Let's take a look at how the axe was made. First, I went out and selected a handle from some of the dead wood in the forest, drew a cardboard template, then you take that template, you cut it out of foam, and the foam gets carved and shaped, then I used clay foam to smooth the blades and get some of the imperfections out. The clay foam worked great, first time working with it. Then the whole thing gets sealed in Warbler to stiffen it up, give it a more realistic appearance. After that, just add some ropes, realistic paint job, and voila, you have a historically accurate Canadian moose axe. 
One of my favorite parties of the year is the Krampus party. It's like a Halloween party at Christmas time. So while shooting pics last year of the Krampus costume, one of my dear friends comes along and he's like, hey, are you the real Santa? I was like, no, I'm not the real Santa. I'm more like the Krampus killing protector of deer kind of Santa, if you need to know. So I was hanging with the deer after that and they, they gave me an idea. They said, hey, if, uh, if you're not the real Santa, why are you dressing like them? Why why not dress like us? You'd be funny. You'd be like a misfit, like Rudolph. So then I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be Rudolph, but I'm not going to be your normal Rudolph. I'm, I'm going to be that Rudolph that's all grown up. So stay tuned for next winter, because I'm carving this nose out and changing it to high voltage. And accessories. I'm adding some accessories, like a sleigh shield and probably blood red letters on the X that say they used to laugh and call them names. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the positive feedback. I love running into the people that these videos have helped. And I just want you to get out there and have a good time. Also, stay tuned because my next set of legs, I'm leaning towards robotic. Maybe steampunk or cyber? We'll see.